uh, forward problem to calculate the sensitivity uh, profile. So here we have uh, a subject directory that we've created that has a nearest file uh, and digitized points. These digitized points have been uh, obtained by a program that Chin Chin Feng, Feng made uh, that's called EasyMapper. Uh, I'll show you in a minute that I actually don't need uh, his EasyMapper program. You could use any digitized, um, uh, any digitized points as long as they're put into a format uh, specific to a text file that I'll show you during this tutorial. The only reason we have the nearest file is because uh, we need the source detector geometry um, that specifies uh, the locations of, uh, the relative locations of sources and detectors, or more importantly, it gives the measurement list. It, it tells which source detector pairs uh, are making the measurements, and, and this is used to determine uh, how to generate the sensitivity profiles. So I've started MATLAB. I've already put Homer 2 into my path. So we will just run the Atlas Viewer GUI. So this runs. Um, takes a couple seconds to initialize. Okay. So it's been initialized. You can see it's generated two directories in our subject folder, a forward FW directory and a viewer directory. The first thing we want to do is actually convert these easy mapper points to uh, dig points, digitize points. So we just choose the easy mapper points we want to convert, and it converts them now into a text file. This is the text file that um, Homer 2 is expecting. I can open this for you and show you uh, the format is really simple. So here's the format. It just has uh, the 10, 20 points that are needed in order to register the atlas to the subject. It has the uh, uh, Nasian location, CZ, Indian, as well as uh, uh, the left and right uh, ear locations. And these are the 3D coordinates provided by the digitizer. We're using a Polymus system. You could use any system you want to get the 3D coordinates. Following that, you then give the 3D locations of all of the source positions, as well as the detector locations. So we have 32 detectors. It's then followed by this. Um, with the polemus, we, we usually get contours of points across the surface of the scalp. At the moment, Atlas Viewer isn't using these points, but in the future, it may use these points, and it may help improve the registration. Okay, so this is a digpoints.txt file. This is the text file that Atlas Viewer needs in order to register the atlas to the subject. So now that we've generated that, we can go back under Tools and say Register Atlas to Dig Points. So this will take a few seconds. We let it run. And it's calculating the transformation using those five uh, 1020 locations. It knows those 1020 locations on the atlas. You digitize them on the subject. And with that, it's generating the transformation. And then it will actually transform that volume metric uh, and, and the surface from the, the atlas space to the subject space. So that is now done. It's put the subject into, sorry, the atlas into the subject space. We can rotate this around to get a better view of it. can say show sources and detectors so you can see red are the sources um, blue are the detectors and we can also see the corresponding measurement list this is the measurement list that was obtained from the nearest file okay 
Now, you can see that these optoid locations are not on the surface of the head. As commonly happens when you digitize the optodes, you may be digitizing on top of the optode, uh, which is floating above the surface of the head. So we want to say register probe to the surface of the head. <clears throat> and that would just pull all the optodes down to the surface of the head. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've got the optodes on the surface of the head. Once we've done that, we can actually run the Monte Carlo program. We go up here to forward model and we say generate the Monte Carlo input. So it tells us now to run the Monte Carlo program. So um, we, we go to the forward directory, so we open up a command window. I'm doing this on a Mac, you could also do this in Windows uh, or Linux. And through the terminal or command window, you go to the directory, this forward directory. And if you look here, you're going to see all these input files. These are input files for each source and for each detector. And it gives you batch files. Dot bat is for Windows. The dot csh is for Linux or for Mac. And this uh, shows you the command. If we look at one of these, basically what we see is each line here is going to run the Monte Carlo program uh, for each input file, each source, and for each detector. The Homer 2 developer's version, actually if you download that, uh, you get the executable for a Mac as well as for uh, Windows. Uh, so you, you, it, um, Homer 2 knows the path to that executable, and all you need to do at this point is, is run that batch file. So we could run this, and it will run the Monte Carlo programs. And depending on the number of photons you've specified, this could take anywhere from you know, a minute per optode location to an hour or more per optode location. Uh, right now, we've specified only right here a million photons. One E6 is a million photons. This will take roughly a minute per uh, optode. Nonetheless, for this tutorial, we don't want to wait for that. I've cheated. I've already run it before. Um, so let me just spend a second now, and I'm going to copy those files over. Uh, I'm going to copy those files. I've already run them. I can copy all of these files. The Monte Carlo program creates all of these files that are uh, .hist and .2point. So I can copy these over into the forward directory, fooling Atlas Viewer into thinking that it's already the wrong location. Let's see. This will fool Atlas Viewer into thinking that it's I've actually run the Monte Carlo. So at this point I can say done. And what it tells me is um, I now use in the menu item generate load sensitivity profile uh, you can see this is now available. This will load, this will generate the sensitivity profile for me. This will take about 30 minutes because it has to do two steps. It needs to um, create a transformation from the volume in which the Monte Carlo program has been run, uh, a transformation from that volume to the surface because we need to project uh, cortical um, points in the volume to the surface of the cortex. Once it's generated that volume to surface transformation. It will then load the two-point file for each source detector pair and calculate the three-point file um, to generate the three-point sensitivity profile on the surface of the cortex. This will take about 30 minutes to generate. Um, again, I've already generated that so we don't have to wait. So let me copy those files over. Basically, this is the projection from the volume to the mesh. And the next three files are the uh, three-point sensitivity profile. So I'm going to copy that over into the forward directory. 
so that now when I run this, it's going to realize the files were already generated, so all it's going to do is gen uh, load those files. Okay. So it's loaded those files, and what you can see, let me turn off the head, you can see now this sensitivity profile for source one, detector one. Let's zoom in a little bit. I can pan that. Turn off pan. Zoom in. So this is source one, detector one. There's the sensitivity profile. I could say, let's look at source one, detector five. Going here, one, five, and there you now see the sensitivity profile for source one, detector five. <clears throat> we could do source two, detector five, and there's the sensitivity profile for source two, detector five. We can also change the threshold for sensitivity. This is a log 10, so it's going from you know, minus two, which is 0.01 to zero, which is one. I could change this so that it goes only one order of magnitude. So now you see a much tighter scale, back to two orders of magnitude. We could look at it um, for the aggregate of all source detector pairs. I put a zero, zero. We now see the sensitivity profile for all source detector pairs. And this gives you an idea of how uniform your sensitivity profile is. So actually, here we're seeing this probe we had hoped to have kind of uniform, relatively uniform sensitivity over the cortical surface, over the motor sensory strip. But what, what we see, and this we can highlight this more if I go minus one to zero, this region here is actually we're much less sensitive to than we are, say, over here. Um, so, you know, we'd have to be a little bit careful with this probe because if, if activation is occurring here, um, which is actually, if I look at the reference points, is really close to C3, C1, we have much less sensitivity there than we do uh, more laterally. Um, so this is a nice way to see what your sensitivity is uh, to the cortical surface for a specific subject. That covers it for this tutorial.